The other day, I sat down and I began to reflect over the span of my career and also my time in business. And I realized that the opportunities that I've lost were mainly down to me shrinking back and not really putting myself out there enough to get the things that I knew that I deserved and that I had worked for. My name is Olaume Brigwe. I'm a transformational life coach and the founder of Super Abana Woman. And in this video, I want to share with you three tips to be more confident and get more out of life. So I'm going to talk about three areas that you can begin to show up in a way that is more confident, in a way that when you see opportunities that may originally look like you don't deserve it, you're not worth it, you're not prepared for it. How do you show up and grab those kind of opportunities so that you can begin to increase the rewards that you enjoy in life? So there are three areas. The first one is at work. When you show up at work, when you show up in your business, there are three ways that you can begin to improve your confidence in the workplace. Number one, especially if you're a woman that you're watching me, number one is to speak up. You have so many beautiful ideas. You have so many ways that you can improve. Maybe the processes, the way things are done. You have things that you can contribute that are of value to that organization, to that team, to that unit. So don't be afraid to speak up. It's okay if your ideas are not immediately accepted or even put aside altogether. It really doesn't matter. Here's the point. If you never speak up, if you don't train yourself to overcome that resistance of speaking up, when that that great idea that's going to put you on the map shows up in your mind, guess what you're going to do with it? You're going to send it the way you send all your other ideas and you're going to literally put it aside and nobody will hear about it. So the first one is train yourself to speak up, no matter how uncomfortable it may feel. Number two, learn to ask for what you want. Learn to ask for what you want, even if you get a no. And the only way you're going to become comfortable with asking for what you want is if you kill that fear of hearing no. If you're so afraid to hear no, you won't ask for what you want. If you know that you want to take a few days off and you know that it's important for you to take those days because your family needs you at that point in time where you're thinking, how am I going to ask? Everybody's busy, it's a busy season. You have to wait. Which is more important to you in this moment? If your family ranks higher in terms of needing you in that moment, don't be afraid, speak up and ask. If you know that you want to ask to lead a project, to demonstrate your expertise in an area, speak up and ask. If you want to ask for a raise, speak up and ask. The worst you can hear is a no. So kill that fear of hearing no's and just ask. It just may end up being a yes. Number three, showcase your achievements. Don't shrink back. When people are celebrating you for what you have done, accept the applause and say thank you very much. The thing is, people are afraid of doing that because they think it is selfish and arrogant. This is the right way to receive accolades for what you have done. Always acknowledge and celebrate the people that contributed to that outcome. So never ever make it about you. On the flip side of that is someone will show up and they're arrogant and they say it's just I, I and I. Nobody else did anything. They were the one that came up with the idea. They were the one that worked hard. Nobody else. In fact, every other person's contribution was like 0.1% while theirs was 99.9%. You definitely do not want to go down that path because arrogance is repulsive. What you want to do is own what you have done and what you have contributed to that achievement while celebrating and acknowledging other people that made it happen as well. So embrace your achievements, showcase it because people cannot read your mind. You know that you played a significant role in achieving that outcome. But if you say, oh, it was just a team effort. Yes, it was a team effort. But what specific role did you play in that outcome? Don't be afraid to showcase it because these are things that will get you promoted in 
the workplace. So we're going to move on to another area, which is in your relationships. How can you be more confident? How can you get more out of life? How can you get people to begin to treat you the way that you deserve in your relationships? Number one, say no as often as you say yes. <laughs> say no as often as you say yes. We love to say yes. We say yes to everything. This person needs you, you say yes. That one needs you, you say yes. But at the end of the day, you're going to be pulled in many different directions, number one. And number two, people will begin to take you for granted. Why? Because they're just a resource they can come and collect at any time. Say no as often as you say yes. Don't be so quick to say yes. I tell people all the time, you are not the savior of the world. It is impossible for you to show up as a helper to everyone that needs your help. You're going to be depleted and you're going to end up being bitter if you do that. So you have to sit down and say, I, do I have the capacity to help this person in this moment, right? Whatever is in your hands to do, do it. So if they're asking, let's say, for example, if I use numbers to explain it, if they're asking for something that is, let's say, 100, and you looked at it and you are flowing in the tens of thousands, 100 is nothing to you. Give the 100. But if at that point in time, they're asking for 100, and in light of everything else that is happening in your life, you can only give 10. Give them 10, explain why, and do not allow yourself to entertain a single shred of guilt because it is what you are able to do in that time. What it means is you were not the one really appointed to help them. It is somebody else. So you have to begin to see that way. So say no as often as you say yes. Number two is don't ever allow someone to treat you the way that you would not treat them. You know the golden rule. It says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if you do unto others a certain way, if you operate and deal with someone in integrity and the person comes and stabs you in the back and you say, oh, well, you know how people are and you excuse it away, they're going to come back and do it again. If you keep giving access to that person in your life, they're going to keep taking liberties. Do you see what I mean? So if you wouldn't treat somebody that way, what makes it okay for somebody else to treat you that way. So don't allow someone to treat you the way that you would not treat them. And number three, when it comes to your relationships is politely exit or downgrade relationships and associations that you have outgrown. This is simple. It's hard to do <laughs> because we form emotional attachments when we engage with people. But you have to think about it. If I have outgrown this association, if I have outgrown this friendship, if I have outgrown this community, it's okay to move on. It's okay to explain and then move on. If they will not accept that, if they will talk behind your back, if they will accuse you, it's okay. You can't control what other people do. You have to think about the context of your own life. If I stay in this place, if I stay stuck in this relationship, how is it affecting my own future and what I'm looking to achieve in the next 12 months, five years, etc.? So, Politely exit. Don't fight with anyone. Don't do it in a way that will stir up bitterness and strife. So do it politely in places where you need to explain. Go ahead and explain. But exit or downgrade. So if someone has a close relationship with you and has come to the point where you know that every time you engage with this person, you leave the conversation depressed and you're thinking, this is not helping me. You don't have to spend all that time with the person anymore. Neither do you have to cut them out of your life completely, but you can downgrade. Finally, we're going to go on to your speech. How can you boost your confidence in your speech and begin to get more out of life? The first one is accept compliments with grace. How do you accept compliments with grace? Thank you, full stop. I remember a time when I complimented a lady's dress. It was a beautiful dress. And I saw it and I said, wow, your dress is beautiful. And she looked at me like I was talking nonsense, talking Greek, looked at the dress, looked back at me and said, oh, this old thing. Oh, I just, you know, I've had it for years, etc." And she went on and on. And do you know, do you know that the more she talked and then I looked at the dress, do you know that the more she talked negatively about that dress, 
I found myself actually looking closer at the dress and thinking, oh, actually the dress is not that beautiful. Her words had changed my image of that dress and of course of her. So thank you is a complete sentence. You don't have to, oh, thank you, but you know, um, this is an old thing. Thomas says you are beautiful. Say thank you. Oh, but you know, today I just threw on my makeup. You don't need to, any of that. Accepting compliments with grace is simply thanking the person for the compliment and moving on. Number two, apologize only when you've done something wrong. This may seem obvious, but I want you to track your conversations over the next maybe one day and listen to how many times you are saying, I'm sorry, when you have done nothing wrong. Somebody disagrees with you. You are in a meeting and somebody speaks up and they say, well, actually, I disagree with this idea that you have. Have you found yourself saying, I'm sorry you feel that way? Why are you sorry that they feel that way? It has nothing to do with you. Do you see what I mean? How many times are you apologizing when you've done absolutely nothing wrong? So if someone comes and says, actually, I didn't like the way you spoke to me. Oh, I'm really sorry. I did not intend to do that. That's a sincere apology. So if you find yourself always using words like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I do apologize. Without you actually having done anything wrong, you are sending a message across that is negative, that is showing that you don't really have the confidence to be able to own up to responsibilities and to be able to stand and say, listen, I've done nothing wrong in this situation, so I have no need to apologize. And of course, the last one in terms of your speech is be your own biggest cheerleader. What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying? Listen, what other people say about you is nowhere near as potent, as powerful as what you're saying about yourself. Somebody can walk up to you and let's use a very, very um, out there example and say, you're stupid. You can look at the person and say, me stupid. I'm very intelligent and you can dismiss it and it will have zero effect on you. But do you know, if you take those words and you begin to think about it, hey, they said I'm stupid. He said I'm stupid. Am I really stupid? Do you know that the moment you begin to take the words and you begin to address it to yourself, you begin to take ownership of that situation situation and the label they're trying to project on you. So what are you saying about yourself? Are you speaking wholesome words about yourself? Just because you make a stupid mistake does not mean that you're stupid. Everybody makes stupid mistakes. Do you see what I mean? So differentiate your actions from your identity. You have to go out every day and say, I can do this. You have to tell yourself that there's nothing I can't achieve with God helping me. You have to say to yourself, this may look hard at the moment, but I no, I'm going to master this thing and I'm going to achieve at the top level at it. Be your own greatest cheerleader. Do not shrink back. The greatest way to build up your confidence fast is by using your words to build yourself up. I hope that's helped you. This is Allow Me Brigway and I will see you in the next video.